Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for part two of how I make a slow stitched art quilt. Now that I've tacked down all of the pieces of my collage, they are held in place just enough for me to start adding my surface stitches. I start by hand stitching around each of the circles with a simple running stitch. Sometimes it can be a little harder to get my needle through all of the layers of fabric and this is sometimes a time when symbols may make things a little easier and less hard on my fingers. I occasionally use a thimble if I'm struggling but I prefer not to as they can sometimes be a little cumbersome. I like to keep to only a small selection of different stitches, usually just three or four. Here I'm adding just a few cross stitches to this frayed edge. I then stitch around the edges of all the other shapes using mostly running stitch. But also adding a few more cross stitches. Now that each piece is secure, it's time to remove all the tacking stitches. I make sure to keep all the lengths of tacking thread to reuse again. That's the first stage of the stitching done. Now it's time to add more texture. As you can see, I've already started adding more stitching to the pieces. Unfortunately, I got carried away in the flow and forgot to film that bit. I stitched a series of rings around the circles. I wanted to depict the rings made when raindrops fall into a pool of water. I was inspired to do this after looking out of my studio window at our bird bath one day when it was raining gently. I watched for a while mesmerised by each raindrop hitting the surface and creating rings.
I continue to add more seed stitches to different areas and once I've decided that enough stitching has been added, it's on to the final stage of completing the art quilt. I've cut the piece to size, which I then lay onto calico. I carefully cut around using the rotary cutter, and this will be for the backing. Now it's time to add the bias binding to the edge. Starting at the bottom of the piece, I line the bias binding right up to the edge, just in the center and pin in place. This is how I deal with the corners. I then continue to pin all the way round. Here's how I do the corners again. This may not be the way the experts do it, but I find it works for me. Once I get back to the start again, I just fold the edge to neaten and start to backstitch following the crease nearest the outside edge, and stitching down the folded edge as I go. I could do this part with a sewing machine, but I prefer to stitch by hand. This is how I stitch the corners 
As you can see, a thimble really helps at this point. I continue to stitch this way all the way around. When I get to the end I carry on for a few stitches just overlapping where I started. I can now turn over the edges to the back. Once I line up the calico backing, I can fold the binding over on the crease. I use these handy clips to hold it in place. The corners just need a little encouragement to keep them neat. I then make two little triangular corners for the top so that the piece may be hung with a small dowel. I tuck them into place using the clips again. It can be a little fiddly sometimes. Once that's all done, it's time to sew into place using slip stitch.
So there we have it, a finished art quilt with abstract shapes in a soft calming greens all ready to hang. If you are interested in any of the pieces shown and would like more information you can find a link to my Etsy shop in the description below. I hope you have enjoyed seeing a little insight into my art process. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye for now.